us discuss few questions of anesthesia which was asked in previous exam which of the following anesthetic agent causes post operative delirium and hallucination now post op delirium and hallucination or we call it emergence delirium so which iv anesthetic causes emergence delirium now guys the iv anesthetic whose typical post op complication is emergence delirium is ketamine so answer is ketamine okay propofol causes a very good post op pleasant recovery so propofol gives a pleasant recovery okay and ketamine produces delirium and hallucination what happens with ketamine uh, what happens the patient is associated post op with visual auditory proprioceptive and confusional illusion all kind of illusions and because of these illusion the patient becomes delirious onset more commonly immediate in the post op period you shift the patient and patient is delirious and can even occur up to 24 hours after ketamine administration and it is a self limiting condition disappears in few hours so it's not something very alarming but when it happens the relative of the patient becomes very alarmed with why the patient is behaving like this so emergence delirium is a common problem associated with ketamine so what is the mechanism depression occurs secondary to ketamine induced depression of inferior geniculate nucleus leading to misinterpretation of auditory and visual stimuli so this is because of depression of inferior geniculate nucleus which causes misinterpretation of auditory and visual stimuli the 5 to 10% incidence and it is more associated with a higher age in children it is seen less female gender and when you give high dose more than 2 mg per kg body weight iv and if patient has a history of personality disorder then it is seen more so more in adult more in female if a history of personality disorder and at a higher dose okay prevention and treatment is same benzodiazepine that is mirazolam is the drug of choice okay so this was the first question now second which of the following agent is preferred for day care surgery i told you so many times in my lecture day care surgery the agent of choice the answer has to be propofol so answer is propofol propofol is the best drug for day care surgery now what is this day care surgery what do i mean by day care surgery day care surgery means admission procedure and the discharge in the same calendar day so if i am discharging the patient on the same day i need to use agents which go out of the body pretty quickly right and propofol what is what makes it so good for day care surgery right the benefit of propofol over other iv anesthetics rapid return of consciousness with no residual effect now in books it is written that recovery from propofol is such that patient has not received any anesthetic agent then anti emetic effect and a very pleasant recovery because of these three points it is the best drug for day care surgery because of common complaint of emesis number of time it is very difficult to discharge a patient with propofol anti emetic pleasant recovery and rapid recovery with no residual effect give us a benefit of using it as day care agent now very quickly i will summarize all the different drug we use for day care surgeries among inhalational desflurane and sevoflurane is best for day care in intravenous propofol overall propofol in opioids the best opioid for day care is remifentanil why fast onset fast offset neuromuscular blocker most of the intermediate acting one we are using we don't use long acting neuromuscular blocker for day care surgery benzodiazepine midazolam is the best and in beta blocker esmolol they all are short acting and for vasodilator again the short acting with a very small half life nitroprusside and nitroglycerin are what we can use so these are the drugs during anesthesia we use for day care surgery okay now coming on the next question what type of anesthesia is required for dental surgery now for tooth extraction in dental surgery mostly we go for the local infiltration right the local infiltration can be given by multiple ways the options are field block nerve block infiltration all of the above now if you search just see this uh, image right what 
exactly is the difference between nerve block, field block and local infiltration. The first one, if I put the local anesthetic near the nerve trunk, then all the nerve fibers originating from it will get blocked. That is called nerve block. So, we are giving at more higher near the nerve trunk. If I give local anesthetic around the area I want to block, we call it, right, we call it field block around the area. And if I put the local anesthetic near the terminal nerve endings, then we call it local infiltration, right. So, nerve block is deposition of LA within the close proximity of main trunk. Field block deposition around the area, around the area, right, in a diamond fashion and local infiltration around the terminal nerve endings. All these are used for dental surgery, right? All three can be used for dental surgery. So, all of the above would be the answer. Let me talk a little bit more about this field block. What exactly is the field block? In field block, local anesthetic is infiltrated around the border of the surgical field, leaving operative area undisturbed. It is around the operative area. In field block, we always add epinephrine to produce a vasoconstriction and prolong the duration. Remember, for nerve block, field block or local infiltration, addition of adrenaline is always good in 1 in 2 lakh concentration, right, 1 in 2 lakh concentration, okay. So, this is about our third question. So, coming on the next question. A patient had an injury leading to massive blood loss resulting in hypotension. Patient requires rapid fluid infusion. Which of the following is most preferred intravenous cannula? So, massive blood loss, hypotension and it is a rapid fluid infusion. So, definitely we would use a wider bore cannula to give fluid fast. So, among these which is the widest bore cannula? Pink gauge, pink cannula is 20 gauge, orange is 14 gauge, Gray is 16 gauge, green is 18 gauge. Which is the thickest? The answer is orange. So, which is preferred in trauma and cardiac surgery for very quick fluid transfusion. See, if I am using a orange cannula for intravenous fluid infusion, within 2 minutes that is I can give a 500 ml of saline water to the patient. So, the flow rate flow rate is 220 to 250 ml per minute, very quick, right. So, this is used for rapid infusion. So, if you see orange, I said 14 gauge, 240 ml per minute. So, 1 liter in 4 minutes. Gray 16 gauge, 180 ml per minute. Green 18 gauge, 90 to 100 ml per minute. Pink 60 ml per minute. Blue 36 ml per minute, yellow 20 ml and violet the thinnest one 13 ml per minute. These are mostly used in pediatric, pediatric. Green and pink is used in adult, normal perioperative condition and these orange and gray is mostly used in trauma and cardiac surgery, okay. So, this is all about our cannulas and different color coding of the cannulas, okay. Next. So, coming on the question, what is the procedure being performed in the image? If you see, what is the procedure being? We can very clearly see the tracheal ring. So, a hole is made in the trachea and the tube is being inserted. It is definitely tracheostomy. Okay, this is definitely tracheostomy. So, answer is to be tracheostomy. Okay, well, intubation, we perform it from oral cavity or through nasal cavity, nasotracheal or orotracheal. So, we would need a laryngoscopy and then we will put a tube. Central line insertion, the great vein is central venous catheter is put in one of the great vein. Here trachea is open, so it cannot be central line insertion. And thoracotomy, uh, what do we do in thoracotomy? Rib is cut and uh, after cutting the ribs, we reach the lung which is encased by the ribs. That is what is called thoracotomy and it is done for pneumonectomy or lobectomy or for thoracic surgeries, right. So, that is what is thoracotomy. Here, these are the tracheal ring and a tube is being put, it is tracheostomy, okay. Tracheostomy, what are the indication? To bypass the upper obstructed airway, to clean and remove secretion, that is for good pulmonary toileting and for more easily and usually safer delivery of oxygen, that is during mechanical 
ventilation mechanical ventilation we use it for prolonged mechanical ventilation we use it for pulmonary toileting and definitely if there is an obstruction to bypass the obstruction okay so these are the steps of tracheostomy you can see we can do tracheostomy by two ways the steps which has been demonstrated in the image this is the steps of surgical tracheostomy surgical tracheostomy so in this a uh, step by step dissection of all the layers are done and trachea is uh, let's say visualized and between second and third tracheal ring a hole is created and the tube is inserted okay and the tube is fixed okay now we always use cuff tracheostomy tube when we put a patient on mechanical ventilation right cuff tracheostomy tube okay so percutaneous tracheostomy in which we do the same thing surgical tracheostomy this is the image of surgical tracheostomy percutaneous is the other way of doing tracheostomy in which by seldinger technique we dilate and we put the put that uh, tracheostomy tube it should not uh, it should not be considered in pediatric that is children less than 12 years obese in which it is very difficult to have a good anatomical view then patient with severe coagulopathy because there is a risk of bleeding if you are not seeing you are dilating and this is a very vascular structure so these are the three important contraindication of percutaneous tracheostomy okay